rising Islamic threat would virtually close the Silk Road and trade with Europe would be restricted to the sea. And then finally, in 1452, when Christopher Columbus was a mere lad of one year old, Muslim leader Mohammed II, otherwise known as Mehmet, laid siege to Constantinople, the last safe refuge to European trading. From that point on, trading with India and China was a very hazardous undertaking because there were no safe havens from Muslim attack and piracy. For more on this story, I needed to drive west for a few hours and travel to beautiful Florence, Italy. The need was dire, and the incentives were great to find another way around and continue the trade that had been cut off by Mohammed II. As they say, necessity is the mother of invention, and it would be Christopher Columbus that would step up to the plate. You know, for every big guy who gets all the credit, there's an army of unnamed people behind them. Back in 1492, if they had given out Explorer's Awards, Columbus would have gotten one, gotten up and thanked his mother, and then not too far down the list, he would have thanked a guy who spent a lot of time toiling away in this cathedral right behind me. Spent a lot of time charting stars and doing math calculations so that one day Columbus could get all the credit. Paolo Toscanelli from right here in Florence, Italy, was a big fan of geography. So he was a student and fan of the Marco Polo books. Well, based on Marco Polo's books, he calculated that there was about 5,000 miles between the Canary Islands and the coastline of China. He was a little off. There were a couple of continents in between. But that's nitpicking, isn't it? Forget about it. So trade between India, China, and Europe dwindled, and it was Islam that had effectively created a blockade. So you can imagine that many Europeans were wondering, how do we solve this problem? Years later, as Columbus reflected on his great journey, he wrote to his benefactors, the King and Queen of Spain, and gave God, not science, the credit for his discovery. Columbus writes this, At this time I have seen and put into study to look into all the scriptures, cosmology, histories, chronicles, and philosophy, and other arts which the Lord has opened to my understanding, I could sense his hand upon me, so it became clear to me that it was feasible to navigate from here to the Indies, and he locked within me the determination to execute this idea. And I came to your highness with this ardor. All those who heard about my enterprise rejected it with laughter, scoffing at me. Neither the sciences which I mentioned above, nor the authoritative citations from them were of any avail and only your highnesses remained faith and constancy. Who doubts the illumination of the Holy Spirit? And now if I can bring this story full circle. The brutal Genghis Khan assembles an empire, thus creating peace, establishing order, and trade with Europe. The great Khan's grandson creates an opportunity that is missed by Pope Gregory X. But nevertheless, trade is established and popularized by the exploits and writings of Marco Polo. This trade, shortly thereafter, is shut down by the followers of Mohammed, thus creating a crisis in Europe. Then along comes a mathematician, toiling away quietly at this cathedral here in Florence, who proposes a new theory of reaching the east by sailing west. And then along comes Christopher Columbus, who believes he's called by God to find a new trade route and fulfill the Great Commission. He sells that theory to the king and queen of Spain, thus setting into motion one of the greatest changes in the course of human history. 